those, as I mentioned, in Mark's first and third, exception to those applications are all we are continuing with in a situation that's set in the The requirement for a, a volunteer is the same as a career. Um, but, uh, the uh, difference is that uh, a volunteer is not required to complete that eight-week course in Versailles. Uh, and uh, they are required to uh, complete and pass the course within 18 months of acceptance of that application. And at that time, they can either be classified as a certified support firefighter, which has uh, responsibilities limited to uh, providing assistance to a firefighter, but it is not the same level as a basic volunteer uh, firefighter. Uh, they can uh, provide services such as what? As far as support, it change air bottles, fill up air bottles, and of course bring, bring the truck uh, after the fire, help uh, salvage an overhaul uh, structure, you know, help relay those. Uh, they are you know, several items, also job positions throughout the whole time of the incident. So you have a station where you refill school? Yes, sir, we have. Uh, Station 10, uh, Station 5, Station, station when I say Station, I'm, I'm doing numbers, sorry. Uh, Pingus Barracks, uh, East Side, West Side, and which one on the station? Station 8. Is that a little tricky? No, sir, not really. Uh, it's uh, basically turning a few knobs, and all of the systems have. No, no, go ahead. Okay. All of them, but it has errors. Turn this one, turn this one, turn this one. Yeah. The filling of those air tanks are for firefighters. Yes, sir. They do not provide that for supervisors. Yes, sir. Yeah. Scuba is the term used for the right? I, 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 well, it's self contained breathing. Right. Right. I guess I'm a little familiar with that because I used to scuba down too. And uh, periodically you have to have this test and inspect them and do all that. Do you do that or do you send them to like Bennett's? Do you send them to like Bennett's? Mark? Yes, I want to see uh, something that says, hey, station one, <coughs> or, or station five, this many volunteers, station ten, this many volunteers. So we get an idea how many volunteers we have in each station. Because uh, I think we have pretty effective what we're trying to look at with even the formulating the future plan. Uh, also, I think it might not be a bad idea if we uh, maybe even advertise it on our county website just to pay uh, firefighters, volunteer firefighters, uh, you know, need it or a particular area, even though we're not really paying them, but maybe the announcement or perhaps have a volunteer drive uh, or some, some sort. What we can do, I think, uh, I like to see this. At the end of the day, you can see kind of which volunteers are responding the most. You can kind of get an idea of uh, what type of equipment we have. Uh, I just like to know kind of what we got at each station. I guess for the personnel. Yeah. That, that's, that's on the roster. Yeah, yeah, I, think I, think I think what you're really asking is out of the roster that we're shown here, how many of these firemen are actually active volunteers at the station? At a station like, we got this many at Shadow Station. We got this many at the Clyde Station. Yeah. Right now, everybody's lumped yeah. up and in the day, we can't say we talk about like, you know, a long term plan is practical. Uh, because if, if we could do dedicated driving in certain areas, I mean, say like Shiloh, we don't like to become a volunteer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, but you, you know, so we can focus on, on, the, on the possible needed areas. Well, we're in the process of doing that now. They've got, you know, I don't know how far the county court is. I do know that at Shiloh specifically, they do have signage up out in front of the fire station now looking for all of them. Well, so, we, 
we, we actually put that signage up at all seven, every station, but station two. Every, at all seven and, 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 and I just bring it up again because I was, I was kind of caught apart when we were talking about volunteers and saying, okay, we got two people at this station. Or, or five. When I was thinking volunteers, I was like, oh, we got about 15 or 20, you know, folks at each station or something like that. But it ain't, it ain't quite that way. You know, we, we got station that oh, might not have nobody. So, you know, I have to think it helps bring things in perspective. Ashley is uh, pulling that up, that information, and we will have that email to you all. Um, <laughs> if I may, I got just one quick question. Sure. Is there, is, is there anything in the volunteers uh, certification requirements that has changed in the last few years? Uh, I believe if, if, if anything it would be positive, we were asked to do uh, a little bit more as far as either training. We've added the firefighter from a certification. And I think that's where I'm headed. It, it's the issue for the difference of the basic volunteer versus the firefighter one. It parallels to a certain point. And I believe it's in your packet here. It, it volu the volunteer and the paid firefighter really is no difference up until a point. Then the volunteer has to decide do I want to be a firefighter one or stop at just this level? Uh, because once you hit, hit this point, I need to face the fire, so to speak, which is part of it. They have to go through a live burn, the next step, the next step. So once they get the 90 hours, 95 to 100 hours, they have to make a decision here. But up until that point, it's the same thing. So, and I, I, so there's, a couple, there's a few changes we made, depending on what perspective you're looking at, so it's just like that. So like Boyd said, as far as the training department, used to, they had to basically, it took them six months. So when you fill out an application, you had to be verified in one, so we relax that. Now some of the other requirements that we placed on them, which aren't new, so I would say it was, we didn't come up with new requirements, we started enforcing old ones that did not be the is things like, um, you know, we had a lot of these, so, you know, the um, county manager referenced people that showed up on the training and didn't make calls. Well, it used to, you know, they would send, every quarter they send in their training report, I mean, this this many training meetings, you know, so we made somebody may at the end of the quarter get a get a stipend check of six hundred fifty bucks. Well, then you go look. Well, they made one call. Like they answered one call, and it, they were, it was like a when you look at the time, they were they were like twenty minutes. So it wasn't even like it was a fire. And so, and I mean, I mean obviously that, that irritated some people when I when we said we're not giving you. I'm like, I, I would love to work somewhere where I was making twelve hundred dollars an hour, which is what I went to. Um, so we just put some requirements. Okay, um, you know, if we want you to attend training, because training is important to be able to do your job, but the citizens need to be given some type of return on their investment. So if you're not responding to your calls for emergency, there's no return. So it's not a mutually beneficial, you know. So. That's where some that that was a change we made that um, you know, if you're a firefighter and you used to get a check and not doing much, then that was a negative. Let's let's do for I'm sorry, just trying to work through some of this. If, if I'm a volunteer and I'm a basic volunteer, um, and I'm at a volunteer station and every one there is a basic volunteer. Attends that state. And I roll up on the scene and it's a fire. And it's all hands on deck, those are fire. I think what I hear sometimes is that when the firefighter one people arrive, maybe that's the full time station, everybody else then has to back off and not, they're not, at that point, they have felt like they've been degraded. For whatever that reason is, because they are volunteer status, not firefighters. And so then 
they take the back seat to the appearance of a professional firefighter, which could be the case in the certification of what that means. So I, I, I just see is your uh, difference you're describing basically between volunteers or a volunteer and a career firefighter? I think it has to do with the certification because if you had a volunteer that was firefighter one, a volunteer that was firefighter one, is he not just as equally qualified as a paid staff member that is firefighter one? For basic firefighter, firefighting, yes. <clears throat> Where you'll have not just paid staff, but also we have some of those long-time volunteers and some of those people that actually pointed out that are volunteers that are getting 200 hours or more. They also have fire officer certifications. They also there's a firefighter two certification. So <clears throat> depending on how long they've been in the fire service and how aggressive they've been with their certifications, we have volunteers that have more years of experience and have more certifications than some of our paid staff do. So it's more of a and this could come in. I'm not sure how it's been articulated to you, but there can. There's a there's a, a discipline that they're trained on as far as assuming command. Who is in in charge of that scene? Um, and Lloyd can go into more or actually what that that criteria actually is. But that could be the case. And sometimes if people are not mature about it, they can get their feelings hurt. But if you've got someone who's fire fire two certified and has been fighting fire for 15 years, and you have someone who's been here to year and is only volunteer certified, then from everyone's safety standpoint, it makes more sense for that senior trained person to... Well, maybe one of the lists that we emailed to y'all is the list of the volunteer personnel having it actually are firefighter ones and firefighter two. I, I didn't want to mislead just because it was volunteer, but it was not on that list that were not. They are several on the list. Good number they are firefighter one and firefighter two. Well, and another thing with the appeal of volunteers is each of those stations have a rank structure. And they determine to a large degree their rank structure. So um, you know if you have a volunteer that is just a firefighter and then somebody shows up that has a um, that's maybe an officer within that station, then regardless of whether it's paid volunteer, it's Typical that the higher ranking person is going to um, assume, assume the command. But um, you know, as, as a general rule, from what I've seen over the past few years, and Lord can correct me if I'm wrong, that was definitely a huge issue in past years. I would say in the past five or six years, though, maybe that is. Um, if there are volunteers that feel that way and um, and kind of do step back, then that's not that I'm discounting it, but that's their perception, not because anybody's told them that. You know, they just and it may be that you know they're used they were used to that for so long and it's they just you know to take some adjusting, but um, you know, Roy and I and Gary, we work hard to make sure because basically the basic premise of instant command, who's in charge of the scene, is you know, there's been plenty of times that Lloyd and I, you know, would pull up to a scene and they were doing everything good. So we were just, hey, let's not do anything. And we didn't just walk up and say, okay, I'm in charge, come back up. You know, it's um, so if you've got a, a, a good officer, then sometimes they do that. So I, I think. You know, if there are some hurt feelings, it's probably not anything anybody's done intentionally, and it's maybe some miscommunication or something. That well, I said, and I think that that's key. And, 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 you know, the whole issue that we're talking about is to try to get a real good perspective from these commissioners from the standpoint of what the entire picture is. And I think that we know that, it, that what we're going to end up looking at at the end of the day is still going to have volunteers involved. So I just want to be sure that, we're, that we haven't created something unintentionally that is, that is um, turning away some of the volunteers that they get frustrated. And I'll, again, 
again, I'll use the same example. A volunteer station first on scene. You've got a senior volunteer that takes command of that fire. They're first on the scene, if that's the way I kind of understand it. And then they, he takes the command, they start fighting the fire. But in all fairness, when the paid staff rolls up on the scene, it's what I hear is that it is the appearance now that they take over the fire. It's like you get out of the way, we're the guys, and we're here to fight the fire. Boy, I have to disagree. Okay. It's more lately, it's more when the pay staff comes on, it's more of a, hey, did you take over? Mm -hmm. Okay. Then, then they're just going to boom. It's, it's more like here. And it has to do with the response, and Mr. Chairman, I'll give you just the, the back that bigger history part of it. When the county was just volunteers for so many years, then there were two paid firefighters whenever we started hiring firefighters. There were only two for, what, almost two years before we added and got up to the toilet. <clears throat> and whenever that started, that paid staff was being dispatched to every fire in the county. And so you have the volunteers get there, and we didn't handle it well on either side to begin with. The paid staff would roll up, and it was very much just what you described. Well, y'all might be volunteers, but we're the paid staff, and get out of the way. And it was, I think, a little disheartening from a leadership standpoint, because the majority of our paid staff has always come from our volunteer ranks. So it was a little bit like, well, hold on a minute, guys. Why does everyone have this attitude when you remember what it was like to be a volunteer? Well, then it's been years. We got that worked out. And so everyone has worked really well for a long time. Um, where we've come into some challenges is when our volunteer numbers came down as well as their response rates came down, that put the paid shift back into having to run all over the county again because we just had to have people on the scene. And so I think that Sometimes if not everyone understands why that is, um, I know that some of the conversations from a budgetary standpoint um, between Ashley and Mr. Pritchard and Lloyd, and also just from a wear and tear on the vehicles, wear and tear on the personnel, we would love to be back into a situation where there was enough volunteer response that Station 10 wasn't having to run all over the county. Um, but a structure fire is a perfect example. If we have that, you got to have one person running the pump. You got two people in the fire, we can get by with that three, but it's not the safest environment in the world. The reason that there's a four is that there should be a fourth person who's keeping an eye on those two people who are in the fire. It's the go-between between the person on the pump and those firefighters on the inside. So we really need that safe environment. And if whoever gets there first, if it is volunteers that get there first, and as Soy said, we've had so few people respond and they're worn out by the time someone else gets there. So they're looking to transfer that command to get a break um, or just to get some relief from the, the pressure that I've seen. The commissioner is with the office of the to take 15 minutes. I can see the light.